Hey everyone, this is Alex Dunn with another Xamarin Quick Tip. Uh, we're going to look at our fourth method for calling platform-specific code from a portable class library. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos, there are links to the source code for this and the previous ones all together uh, up on GitHub, and there's also a link here to the Hockey App SDK since that's the platform-specific code we're going to be implementing. So this fourth method that we're going to be looking at is dependency injection. So previously we've done um, a singleton, we've done the Xamarin Forms dependency service, and then we've looked at a non-Xamarin Forms service locator. Um, so what we're going to do now is continue to use MVVM Lite and create a view model and some two-way bindings um, for our button click to actually use a command and our view model is going to have our dependency injected into its constructor and then use that dependency to actually um, open up our feedback from our hockey app SDK. So back over in Visual Studio we have our original hockey service we created. Um, we still have our Xamarin Forms dependency registration here but we're not actually going to use that and for now we can comment this out um, since we're using the MVVM Lite registration. We also have our IOC service in our iOS app, which actually registers our hockey service for our portable iHockey service. And then we also set Simple IOC to be our service locator provider. And then from here, we have our actual locator service, which we were using to make a call to the service locator to get an instance of the i hockey service which would which would pull in our iOS hockey service and then from our main page and our app we make a call to our service locator and we call the get feedback there so what we're going to be doing now is creating an actual view model with a command so we're going to be able to clear out all this stuff here um, and we're going to be able to call our hockey service by injecting it into our constructor. So we won't have a need to call the locator service here anymore. So what we're going to do now is we'll go ahead and add a view model. And we'll just add it to the root since that's where our page is. Wait for it to load. We'll just call it main page view model. And all this is going to need is a command um, as well as a private read-only iHockey service, which will then get injected through the constructor. So we're going to use the base class from MVVM Lite in order to get our iNotify property change implementation and all that that it does handle pretty well for us. Come on, there we go. Now we'll have our private read-only iHockey service, and we'll bring in our namespace for that as well. And we'll call that our hockey service. And now in, we'll call our constructor, and our constructor is going to take in an iHockey service, and that's just going to set our private read-only instance. Cool. And now we're just going to create a command that we're going to use to bind to our page. So we'll create a private i command, bring in another namespace. We'll just call it the feedback command. And then we'll create the public bindable one. We're going to use the relay command that comes with MVVM Lite. Uh, that way we're not also still not bound to the Xamarin Forms command. And then this is going to call, oh, I need my namespace, hockey service dot 
get feedback. I not actually get my namespace. Come on. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create an IOC service in the PCL and it's going to be essentially the same thing as our iOS one in structure. So we'll create a class. We'll call this our IOC service as well. And so what we're going to do now is create a method to register our view model uh, in a similar way that we did our service before. Bring in our namespace for simple IOC. Well, and then we'll call register and we'll just pass in main page view model. So now back in our main page, we can get rid of this whole feedback click stuff. And then we're just going to set the binding context for our page. And we are gonna use a service locator here. Um, in order to pull in our view model but there are some other ways to do this where you can set it up to automatically create it from an application resource or something like that. But this is just the quickest and easiest way to do this. We'll call get instance of main page view model. And so this will bring in the instance that's created when we register the main page view model, or if it hasn't created one, it'll go instantiate a main page view model. And then we're going to go to our actual XAML for our page. We're going to get rid of our click event here. And we're just going to set up the command property to binding feedback command. All right, so now that we have our binding context set, uh, this is going to automatically be bound to that main page view models feedback command. And because we registered our main page view model to our IOC container the same way we did with our iHockey service, these are both going to be registered now. And so it's going to basically, when it goes to construct one of these, it's going to say, hey, we found a constructor that takes an iHockey service. Let's go try to find a registration. Uh, and then we'll also go instantiate the iHockey service here as well. So now the very last thing we need to do is actually call our new IOC service to register those dependencies. Um, so we're just going to do that in our app XAML CS. So if we go up before here, we'll just call new IOC service dot register view models. Cool. And now we might have a name conflict in our app delegate. Yeah, so we'll just specify the namespace here. Actually, even better, we'll rename the iOS specific IOC service to be an iOS IOC service. And then we'll go back here and rename it since the auto rename isn't going to work there. There we go. All right, cool. So now we should be able to run this and once again, see the exact same results of being able to see our hockey app feedback. So once again, back in our app, we have that same button um, and clicking it pulls up our hockey app feedback control the same way it did before. Uh, so this time it's using dependency injection instead of our service locator or singleton pattern, uh, which is more robust and more reusable between different code bases, which is awesome. So the very last thing we're going to do in the next video is just combine all four of those practices into one app. So we're going to split up our button here into four different buttons. So we'll show one with a singleton, we'll show one with the dependency service, we'll show one with the non Xamarin forms dependency service, and then we'll show this very last same one uh, using dependency injection.